starting off with a quarter, uh, three quarter inch 6061 T6 aerospace grade lightweight aluminum. We're going to turn this down, um, face it off first, and then turn it down, face it off, center drill, sport it, turn it down, groove it, drill it, and then part it off. A little more. Okay. Center drill. And turn this guy down. Zero. Going about 50 thousandths per pass here. Just hogging off. Probably go more, but I'm not in a big hurry. All right, see what we got here. In terms of diameter. Uh, 520. So we need about 50 thousandths more. Okay, I don't care about surface finish here, actually, the rougher the better, because these will be bedded, obviously. Uh, looks like I need five thousandths. <clears throat> so this will be the final pass. In terms of turning, Let me know if you guys like this angle better, trying something different. All right, that should be good for the outside diameter. Should be. Yep, uh, looking about 470. Okay, so I just do, I don't know, every, this uh, grooving tool is about 100 thousandths. Uh, so just manually do this, slow her down a little bit, touch off, set my ARO, okay. Grooving.
Okay, grooving operation complete. Now we drill. The deeper you go, the less or the more the chips build up. You got nowhere to go. So I can only do about 200,000 per pass here. But that should be deep enough. Let me check. I don't want to drill too deep into this and waste material. Yeah, that's plenty. Okay, drilling complete. Now we're just, uh, while we got this here, we'll chamfer the mouth. Finish up this end at least. Right, let's put a quick chamfer on there. Good. Now we'll just part them off long. So I just part them off plenty long. And then we'll finish it up to length when we know what the uh, stock dimensions are for the action screws. Yeah, right about that. This <clears throat> one. And then we'll just make the next one as long as we can without hitting the chuck. Right about there. All right. And there you go. Rough pillars. Uh, like I said, we'll uh, calculate the uh, lengths that we actually need for the stock uh, and then can, uh, finish them off, uh, finish them off to length and then uh, kind of repeat this, <clears throat> sorry, repeat this part, put the finish. So we'll uh, face this down to length and then chamfer it nicely like that. And then same with that guy, the uh, front. So typically the long ones go in the back and the shorter ones go in the front. Um, I know with this Springfield, it's definitely pretty short. It's probably, it might not even be half that length. Uh, but anyway, there's that portion complete. Custom made pillars. Uh, we do this for each and every rifle. <clears throat> there are a few stocks, some of the nicer uh, like manners. I know they provide pillars um, that are usually pretty much spot on in length and everything. So. Um, but anyway, for this for this project, obviously we're using uh, the existing stock, and there's no custom made or pre made pillars <clears throat> that comes with that. So, uh, so there you go. There's a quick little demonstration of how I make the custom pillars when we pillar bed a stock. All right, so uh, we'll be back for the next phase here.
Okay, here we are. The parts are freshly out of the bluing system. Everything turned out real nice. Um, I didn't really polish much. I did give the barrel a good little polish, but most of the parts were already pretty good um, in terms of finish. And uh, obviously I made the cap out of stainless steel, but uh, it's actually kind of growing on me. I kind of like that transition. Uh, two-tone or maybe it's just me wanting to accept the fact that I screwed that up <laughs> it's okay we can uh, Cerakote that if, if necessary but anyway everything turned out real nice the logo you can still see right there and the cartridge mark um, so yep everything turned out real nice there I did give the floor plate a real nice polish I just wanted to kind of give an example of what a nearly matchless finish would look like with our new bluing system. So there's that and everything else. Um, typically the bolts are left in the, in the white, but this is a hunting gun. So I figured I'd just go ahead and blue that as well. So uh, we're gonna put this back together. A um, couple parts here, pretty easy. So the floor plate, a place for its spring, for the latch, and then that goes in there. <clears throat> and it's a little pin. Pretty sure it's that one. Oh yeah, and also the uh, matter of the floor plate popping loose, I did alter the... <clears throat> Under here I had to, had to cut out a little bit of steel and under here so that the, the plate would actually go... Seems to be holding. Seems to be holding now. Uh, but if it doesn't, if it continues to be unruly then we can just get a whole new um, floor plate system and then the magazine follow or so the follower and spring are held in right here that uh, so the bolts got all these components this, this okay so we'll start with the shroud again just the bullying system does such a nice job So, um, there's a tiny, yeah, there's a tiny pin right there, and this thing, I don't know the technical term, the, hmm, hmm, I'll have to look that one up. I know it goes right there. And that prevents the bolt from unscrewing until you push that in. So we're gonna call it the bolt anti-turny piece. Okay, little pin holds that in. <clears throat> so I just have to get punch blocks in there.
Okay, I got that pin in there, which holds the Bolt anti-turny device in there. The firing pin will reunite with its spring. <clears throat> and then this will be a little easier to show without the spring, so I'm not fighting it, but you got your, your two-piece firing pin. Um, this is actually very handy uh, for the infantrymen. If their firing pin broke for whatever reason, tip or whatever, they could simply pull that back, swap it out, go to the armor and get a new tip, as long as the rest of this back end's okay. So that's kind of a cool little feature there that's not seen very often. Now the shroud has one more piece to reassemble, uh, which is the three position safety. Now, <clears throat> when I was taking this apart, disassembling it, there is a spring-loaded plunger right there that I could not seem to get out. I uh, suspect, so there's a little tiny hole right there. And a, if you look closely in the polish, you can see a square right about there, something like that. I reckon this is probably pressed in to here because I don't see how you would get that spring and plunger in there with this big honking thing in the way. So I've never gotten to the point of actually having to tap, and I, my worry here is tapping that out, it's never gonna, it, it, It'll be too loose, so I left it in. And working it, and it has this uh, exit hole here, so I'm not worried about, it doesn't appear or feel or sound as if it has any salts left in there. And I blew it out and rinsed it out as best I could. So I left that in, that's typically a no-no, but again, I think if I were to try to drive this out, this wouldn't go back in. And we'd be dealing with a whole another can of worms there. So the idea there <clears throat> is that uh, spring-loaded plunger hooks over the uh, little recess in there and stops on those three points that we showed earlier in the first episode of this series. So what we need to do, again, I'm gonna get this in the vise. I'm gonna clamp this and then use a little tool to compress that plunger in there and then just kind of force it over that. That's how I got it out, so that's how it should go back in, so. Okay, so with that in there, typically you can feed the firing pin back assembly in there. So you've got to feed the pin in and then get your safety lever so that it holds the, holds the pin in there. And now for the fun part, we get to compress the spring and get the tip back on there. I may need a vise for this. Yeah. Okay, so the idea here, it's, it's gonna be too hard. The idea here is to compress that spring down far enough to get your, this collar deal over it. And then this, which we showed just a little bit earlier, gets captured like that. But I've gotta get that spring compressed more than halfway down. So that's gonna take a, another bench vise. So all I'm gonna do is hold in a vise and just push this whole pin forward and then hopefully get those two things on there. Use the punch block, kind of push it down, and then we've got to have that safety on the uh, vertical position to get this back in the bolt. So that should be everything. Yes. Extractor's on. So off camera, I put the extractor back on. Um, refer to the first, in these, the first episode in the series to see how that was taken off. And so, with everything back together, this simply screws back into the bolt body. And here's where our bolt stop anti turny device comes into play. So that locks it in. And like you saw in the first episode, you push that in and unscrew it. Okay, so the bolt is completely assembled, reassembled. And doesn't that look sleek? Nicely blued. Okay, now we've got the action components. 
our receiver components. Okay, first thing to go back in will be our ejector. And yeah, you guessed it, I blew that too. Why not? <clears throat> so, ejector is held in right here by this little pin that has a screw head on it. That goes in <clears throat> that hole there. And there is no spring involved. So, got to get it in there just so, and I know this is not gonna come out on the camera very well. Okay, and then feed that little pin back in. <clears throat> Sorry, it's not the best video footage, but it's okay. <clears throat> and that's where the little slot in the head comes in. You can just kind of wiggle it in there <clears throat> until it seats where it needs to be. And let's just make sure with the bolt. Yep. There it is. So that's working like it should. Then we've got the magazine cutoff system or our no switch. So that's held in by this pin. And then there's this spring detent here. goes right in there <clears throat> and it is actually captured by just by the assembly itself so. yeah. fairly easy to put back in just kind of got to push it down and then force that pin back in So, put this back in, and there is a screw here that comes with the cutoff. So what that does, see that groove? That's gonna capture that inside the receiver so this doesn't just come out all by itself. So. I'll kind of push this in. <laughs> ah, yes. We will insert the spring and plunger and then kind of place it in there. And then feed this rod in. There we go. And then, this might work. Just screw in its retaining screw. Probably correct term. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, that, it's keeping that in nicely. <clears throat> okay, so there's that. Magazine cut off. On, off. <clears throat> now, I'm going to fully admit here that this little piece came with the gun. And this, this rifle was fairly disassembled when I got it. And I am not familiar with this part. So, I know how YouTube is full of experts. So if someone would like to go ahead and put in the comments what this little part is and what it might be for, the only thing that I can see is that it goes in there's a little hole right there that does match the little stem. But my problem is, what is that doing? 
So there's also a little cut in the back of the magazine, or not the magazine, but the well, that it seems like it would pivot into, right? But uh, in my disassembly manual, in my 1903 service manual, this is, this is not listed anywhere. And again, I don't see what the purpose of that is. So if that swings there, and obviously this is going to be blocked by the entire floor plate. So the, the rifle works perfectly fine without this. And so again, if anybody knows what that is, I would love to know. And um, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not an expert on these rifles. I'm an expert on machining the barrels and turning them into accurate rifles. But as far as this little piece, I'm going to hang on to it. But uh, like I said, the thing works just fine without it. And I do not know what that's for. So one more time, it's just this tiny little double focus. Focus. There it goes. So anyway, we're going to leave that out for now. Last but not least is our trigger assembly. Spring, pin, trigger, none of this applies. The sear has a convenient little hole or pocket for the spring. And let's get this going the correct way. Uh, oops. Right in there. <clears throat> I'm just gonna. Push that in and get that pin started. Right there. <laughs> Strong hands. If anybody knows what that reference is, put it in the comments. So that's, uh, there we go. Now we'll do a function check. So that's on, will not fire, bolt is locked shut. Middle position, will not fire, bolt should open. And third position to the left, says ready, kaboom. Now, <clears throat> one thing I forgot to mention in the disassembly portion, a very cool feature of this rifle. So if the guy's out in the field and pulls the trigger, and has the click but no bang like that, <clears throat> you can, in the heat of battle, pull that back and recock the gun. So that's pretty cool. Um, although most likely the cartridge is just a dud, so he could do that all day and it would, it's not going to help him out. But it is there in case the guy needs it. So this uh, rifle's just jam packed full of beneficial features for the rifleman. Now, obviously, you can recock it by doing that, or you can pull it back and recock it like that. So anyway, cool thing. I just, I remember I missed that in the front, in the beginning. One last little close-up of everything. The midnight blue. Okay, so now all now we got left is the stock <clears throat> reassembly and maybe just take it out and uh, fire a few more rounds through it. Make sure everything's co kosher for our customer, function and safety wise. But uh, yeah, everything went together real nice. And here's the stub of the barrel that you may have seen in episode two. Okay. And I blew it too. Um, so this is kind of an example of a bead blast finish. Dull, uh, very matte, matte finish. And in contrast, here's a very highly polished 
Just get my fingerprints off of that. So, you know, that's two little options you got for finish while we're at it here. Shiny, polished, uh, very classy, um, or dulled down kind of matte, or anything in between. This is probably a little bit on the shiny side for a uh, typical hunting gun, at least like in the broad daylight. Um, even though it's black, it still will reflect real bright light. But uh, yeah, that just kind of shows you the differences and choices you may have in finishes. So the super bling, super shiny, super polished, or the dulled down mate, mata, mata, mata. Where do you say that? M A T T E finish? Matt. Who's Matt? And then on the stock, this is most certainly not real ivory, but uh, we were able to clean it up quite a bit. And uh, I'm going to get in there with the checkering tool and kind of clean up that little schmutz in there, but the uh, grip cap as well. Clean up really nicely. So we're going to pause real quick, put a couple more coats of finish on the stock, and we'll wrap this up accordingly. Okay, so with all that together, one last little look at the uh, beautifully blued Rock Island. Arsenal, 1903. Okay, so all that's left is do you put her back into its stock? Um, the stock has been nicely bedded. So yeah, pillar bedded, full length pillar bedding from the little pad on the shank of the barrel to the recoil lug, the front action screw, surrounding the magazine well, and then the rear action screw. All right, so like I said, all that's left to do is let's get this stock back together and its little bits and pieces. So we'll just go ahead and pre-install this bottom metal. And um, there's quite a snug fit in the stock there. So that's what the bottom metal looks like installed. Just polish this up real quick. This uh, high gloss polish, that's the only problem. It shows anything, fingerprints and little smudges and things. It sure is nice looking, but you always got to constantly polish the dang thing. And then that uh, grip cap back on and the forend tip. Like I said, we cleaned those up real nice. The um, one note on the stock itself, I, we didn't necessarily refinish this. We obviously got the new pad on there. So that's a Kiki's, Kiki's Real Coil pad. They're real easy to grind and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, but the stock itself is really not in bad shape. It never was. And um, we're not trying to be lazy or anything. It's just that <clears throat> this kind of stuff here is just whew, extremely time consuming. And again, it's, is it really worth it? I mean, the customer didn't necessarily think so either. So, right, that's just kind of a is what it is situation and it's a hunting gun again it's going to be out in the field so the main thing was get that butt pad replaced so that uh, obviously has a little bit of cushion there instead of a rock hard rotten out uh, gross <laughs> uh, recoil pad so now our rear swing swivel stud is screwing in as it should all right so good deal
That's all back. Looking nice. Okay, here we go. The finished product. Isn't that nice? Okay, just to recap, we've got a classic Rock Island Arsenal model 1903, bolt action, <clears throat> chambered in 30-06 Springfield with a Schillen barrel, uh, number four contour barrel 26 inches with half 28 threads with a two-tone basically a stainless steel thread protector the barrel is chromoly as you can see it took the bluing extremely well and matches everything else real nice and fully bedded stock and brand new recoil pen cleaned up White plastics. So this rifle is uh, ready for a whole new lease on life. Uh, I'm ready to go out and take a lot of game, hopefully, and uh, be uh, enjoyed for generations to come. This is Jeff Montgomery with Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Thank you very much for joining us on this little journey of rebuilding this classic uh, bolt action rifle. Uh, please leave a comment. Uh, like that video uh, if you if you like it hit that thumbs up button that would help us out in the uh, there thumbs up and then uh, obviously subscribe to the channel if you like what you're seeing here we're uh, trying to trying to put out stuff uh, at least once a week uh, some content that might be interesting and or educational or just you know obviously promoting our services and skill sets and things like that so yes thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.